Hi, my name is Mani Ali Khani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. Today we continue our discussion on material characteristic. <music> If you remember from the first session, we concentrated on load deflection graphs to understand the effect of the different geometry of the material and on their performance under the load or force. In the second session, we focus on a stress strain graph to be able to compare different material regardless of their geometry. Today, I'm going to introduce you to some terminology that both clinician and academician should be familiar with during their professional life. If you look at the stress strain graph, you will notice that a strain strain graph have very similar characteristics as load deflection graph with the similar points that define almost similar things. First, elastic limit. You can see the elastic limit in both a stress graph and load deflection graph that shows where the elasticity of the material ends and plasticity or permanent deformation start. The second point is ultimate strength. The maximum amount of the stress that the material can accept before starting to change shape. And the third is a failure point when the material breaks. If you remember how upright is the graph defines the rigidity or stiffness of the material in the load deflection graph. Here, we call that module of elasticity or Young's module. Defines exactly the same thing, how rigid or stiff the material is. In addition to this general terminology, I like to also be familiar with certain terminology that is very useful in clinics and in academic discussion. One of them is necking. If you look at a stress-strain graph, you notice that the failure point is reached in the lower load in compared with the ultimate strength. That does not make any sense how it is possible. That's because of the characteristics of change in the shape of the material. Let's look at the example of tensile strain. Assume we are applying a tensile force along the long axis of a material such as wire. After application of the force and you reach to the ultimate strength, the material is starting to become thinner in the center. Now the material does not have the same structure as the material before. Now it takes much less force to break the material. So necking defines when the ultimate strength has been reached and the material starts to change a structure. The other terminology that I like you to be familiar with is ductile and brittle. Some of the material, if you look at the stress strain graph, you see that they reach the failure point very fast. Those materials are brittle, some are, such as ceramics, such as glasses. Some materials, it takes a lot of permanent deformation before they break. They can accept much more strain. Those materials are called ductile. The other terminology that I like you to be familiar is the toughness. The amount of the energy that we can transfer to the material before its failure point defines how tough that material is. So if the graph of a material shows that is extended significantly toward the right until the failure point, that material can accept a lot of energy before it breaks, such as metal. Under this graph, the amount of the energy that is required until elastic limit is called resilience. So resilience as part of the toughness is just the maximum amount of the energy that material can accept until elastic limit. And after that, the permanent deformation starts. The last terminology that I like to you be familiar with is fatigue. A stress and a strain graph does not show the fatigue because it's designed based on a single application of the stress and how the material deflects or receives a strain. But what happens if we apply the stress in a frequent mode? In another word, there is a component of the time. Depends on the structure of the material, depends on type of the material, depends on the frequency of application of the load, how was the amplitude or magnitude of the load that we apply, you will see after certain cycle, 
the material that was very strong now it can break with much lower force or load and that's called fatigue I hope you enjoyed this session of CTOR channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.